Hi everybody. Today's video is a birth announcement for this litter of Australian Labradoodle puppies. Hi, I'm Claire from Van Isle Doodles and today is a birth announcement video and we are introducing you to our two a tea litter. And this is beautiful Mama Tippy. And as you can see, she has six gorgeous Australian Labradoodle puppies. These puppies are just barely 24 hours old. And we have another all male litter at Van Nuyl Doodles. All, a, a litter with all of the same gender is very unusual. And we have had two such litters in the very recent few months where they've both been all boys. So interesting, not sure why, but uh, that is what we have. So today in this video, we're going to tell you a little bit about the actual birth of these puppies. We're going to talk to you a little bit about Tippy and how Tippy's doing, what is going on with her, and then provided that Tippy's okay with it, we're going to show you each of the puppies individually and just give you a brief introduction to them. Now, Tippy may not like the idea that I'm holding her little Labradoodles up here next to me, and if that bothers her, then we'll put the puppies back down and we'll just show you by putting the camera on them. It's all about making sure that our mama Labradoodle is completely comfortable and at ease. So we have all six of these puppies here and you can see they're fairly uniform in terms of their size with one notable exception which is the puppy that Tippy is currently cleaning. That is this puppy here, Silver Collar Boy, and he was the second born. When we go through each of the puppies we'll do them in birth order to tell you about them and that's how we'll do all of our videos. All of our litter updates are done via YouTube video so that you always have a chance to see all the puppies and your mama dog. So Tippy, this is her first litter and Tippy is Ripple's daughter. And Tippy has very similar mama Labradoodle skills to her mama Ripple. She is so relaxed and calm. You can see here, she's just completely at ease with her puppies. She's not the least bit worried that I'm here. And you'll notice she's looking out this direction and that she's not looking at me. If you watch our videos normally, you'll know that our mama Labradoodles usually are giving me very strong eye contact. But Tippy is on high alert at the moment. And that's because when we film the these videos in here, we open up the door that is enclosing this little area for Tippy, and behind that door is a set of double glass doors. So Tippy can then see out into the hallway of our home. Well, what was going on when we opened the doors was that Ripple Spirit and one of our up and coming girls, Joya, were all at the glass door looking in because they all wanted to catch a little peek of Tippy's new little Labradoodles. So this annoyed Tippy to no end. She is a ferociously protective mama Labradoodle and there was no way she was going to allow anybody to be looking at her puppies. So just before we started filming, we took all of the adult dogs and we put them into our doodle den so as to make sure that Tippy's comfortable and relaxed. But she's still keeping an eye out because she of course has no idea that that's what we did. When Tippy herself was pregnant, she was the one who was always looking in here to see uh, the little Labradoodles that were in here. She used to look at her Mama Ripple's puppies quite regularly, didn't you, Tippy? Yes. Tippy is a very sweet girl. She's an extremely calm and relaxed dog. And you can see, even with her demeanor right now, even though she's on alert, you can see her body position is lovely and relaxed. And you can see the puppies are not at all agitated. She's not passionate passing on any stress to her puppies. This is a really important feature for puppies. When those, these little Labradoodles are with Tippy and they're nursing, if she has any stress or discomfort or anxiety, it goes straight through her body into her milk, which is then right into the puppies. So the last thing you want is for a brand new puppy to start off having a lot of anxiety in their nourishment. You want their whole world to be full of calm, quiet, peace, happiness, warmth, and full tummies. So that's why we work so hard 
to make sure that our mama labradoodles are calm and are in an area where they're not disturbed. So we also have um, an Alexa in the room for the puppies and their moms and that way we can have music playing for them throughout the day. This is both calming in terms of the music, provides some calm to the mom, but it also serves a really valuable person in, a purpose rather, in that our mama labradoodles then can't hear what's going on in the front area of our property. So because we have curated canines as well as Van Nile doodles, we have a lot of deliveries. We also have guardians coming and going. We have Taylor coming over to do training. We have Jillian coming to work each day. We ourselves go in and out during the day. There's lots of activity in this house. So that's all great for down the road and desensitizing the puppies to sounds. But when we're at this stage, we want peace, quiet, and calm for our moms. So when we have the music playing, we have it loud enough that those sounds and those comings and goings are not able to be detected by our mama labradoodles. That allows them just to go, oh, it's okay, I can't see anything because it's all enclosed, nobody can see me, and they're unaware of any potential dangers. Because right now, everything is a potential danger in Tippy's eyes. And you can see she has herself very nicely wrapped around her puppies here. So this is not ideal to provide them all with the opportunity to nurse at once. And once we're on about day three or four, we'll see Tippy start to stretch out a bit more. But this is very common for first time moms right in the first couple of days. She's protecting her baby. She's wrapping herself around them as much as she can. And, and that's an instinctive thing in terms of warmth and also again to protect puppies and hide them from potential predators. So once she's settled into that role a little bit more we'll find that she stretches out and then they'll all be able to nurse at the same time. Right now they have to uh, sort of shuffle about and, and take turns. However you can hear nothing. None of these puppies are complaining, nobody's squeaking. So that tells you that even though red collar and tan collar here are not nursing, and neither I believe is light blue collar here, that their tummies are full, they're warm, they're content, everything's good. And that's what we look for. If we have puppies that were agitated and crying and making uh, fussing, you know, any, any sort of fussing, then we would come in, we would we would stretch Tippy out, so to speak, and we would help show her how to better position herself with her puppies. Now, quite often the first night after puppies are born, we're up pretty much the whole night rearranging puppies. So last night we were up three times in total with the puppies and all that had happened was one puppy would stray off over here and not be able to find their way back. And so then you can't believe how a little tiny, tiny little slip of a thing like this can make a racket. You would be able to hear this puppy crying no matter where you were in our home. Uh, we have a 4,000 square foot home, it's on two levels. Uh, but regardless of where you were, you would hear that puppy crying. Now to make sure we don't ever miss anything, we do have a baby monitor that has a full audio and video as well. We take that baby monitor with us everywhere because when the store is closed, when we're not filming, we also can't see in to see what Tippy is doing. So just to be doubly sure, we always have one adult person with the baby monitor, 24 hours a day monitoring mom and the puppies. Now Tippy had a really quite nice and easy delivery. She had two puppies with a rather unique style. So the first puppy was the smallest puppy, the second puppy was the largest puppy, and then the rest of the puppies were all around the same size. So nothing untoward happened for puppy number one, completely normal birth. It was her very first puppy. She gave a little bit of a cry, uh, which is totally normal for the very first puppy. And then the second puppy, which was a wallop of a puppy, great big fellow. Um, at first I thought he was stuck. I was uh, just gloving up and getting ready to assist in the birth of that puppy. Uh, and she popped him out. So that was all great. And then the next puppy, she was uh, she stood up, which is not unusual during the delivery process. She stood up to rearrange herself, and when she stood up, whew, 
poof, out flew puppy number three. He was not in the sack, he was no longer attached, he just whoof, came right out. It was quite a, quite a surprise and uh, she gave a little squeak with that one which was odd because it was such an easy delivery. Uh, then the next one was born just as we would expect it to be in the sack, normal amount of contractions and then puppy number five, same thing. She stood up and whoof, out the puppy came. So it was quite funny for those two. You have to really be alert and make sure that you're watching all the time and you're ready right there to help. Tippy didn't need very much help with these puppies. She did a fabulous job. She, she had everything handled and she knew right away with the very first puppy what to do. Lick the puppy right away, Was had the puppy nursing within seconds of it being born. So now let's see if she's going to let us introduce the puppies to you. So the first born, born puppy was born. They were all born on November the 9th. The first one arrived at quarter to nine in the morning. And I won't take the puppy all the ways up because clearly that's not something Tippy wants me to do. And this is our smallest puppy in the litter. This is light blue collar boy and he is a caramel tuxedo. So you'll see he has lots of white markings on his head and his face, white around his neck, white on the chest and white up his paws. Now that's what puppies sound like when they're unhappy. And that's red collar, got a little turned around there and tan collar. When I move light blue and not, now light blue himself is crying. So we'll just hold him here for a second because we don't want to be or him to be upset. Mr. Light Blue Collar Boy came in at 179 grams. So just a little wisp of a thing. So that's our Light Blue Collar Boy. And there we have Tippy right away checking to make sure all is well and that I didn't leave anything on him that she didn't want me to. Good girl, Tippy, I love you. Next was Silver Collar Boy. Now that is our giant puppy that's over here nursing right now. And he probably has to eat four times more than anyone else because he is a giant fellow. There we go. Mr. Silver Collar is an absolutely stunning black party. You can see he has beautiful markings on him and he has Tippy's signature half ear where you'll see it's half black and half white. And then he has this adorable black patch on his eye here. This is going to be the cutest little gaffer when he grows up. This enormous silver collar boy came in at 256 grams. Holy smokes, that is a big puppy. He is almost twice as big as black collar puppy, which we'll get to later. Big, big boy. And like I said, I was a little concerned that he was a stuck puppy, but she delivered him. And oddly enough, with this puppy, who's the giant, she didn't say a word. No squeaking, no crying, nothing at all. Now you see how she's washing his face there, just checking him out, making sure all is well. The puppies can't see. They're born with their eyes sealed shut and they can't hear because you can see even how their ears are sealed shut. The first thing will happen is their eyes will open, usually around uh, the two week mark. And then at around three weeks, between two and three weeks, three and a half weeks, their ears open. But for now, the only sense that they have is their nose. And so we take advantage of that. And when we're holding them, we keep them right up to our neck so that they start all ready to learn our scent. So I call this scenting. I don't know what anyone else calls it. It's just what I do. And this is when I also start to figure out, does a puppy like to be rocked or do they like to be jiggled? Do they prefer to be this way, that way? What do they like? Next week, we'll show you a little bit about the early neurological stimulation we do with our puppies. I'm not going to do that today because as I said, they're just barely 24 hours old. They've got enough going on to deal with. Next came Tan Collar Boy. Tan collar boy is a chocolate. Now, Tippy herself is a sable. She's a chocolate sable. And if you look at her, you'll see her color is almost identical to her mama ripples. The chocolate part is still strong and dark on her ears, but everywhere else her chocolate has sabled. So it's quite likely that uh, she would have a sable puppy. Now, if you've watched our other videos, you've heard me say, and I've shown you many times, Sable is very easy to detect because you have a line down the back that's darker than the body color. When you'll see on Tan Collar Boy, 
there's no line down his back at all. So I'm thinking he may not be a sable. I'm thinking there may not be a sable in this litter, at least not um, in the solids. And you'll see on this little guy too, he has some phantom markings here on his legs, a little bit on the side of his face, and he does have them under the tail too. I'm going to put him down because he's unhappy. There we go. So he may indeed be a phantom. Um, if he is, he's what we call a weak phantom. And a weak phantom merely means that the phantom markings are not as pronounced as they are in a, in a normal, full, strong phantom. Uh, but you can see there on the back of his leg, you can easily see the phantom markings there. That's the easiest way to see it. Well, I don't have to bother him and he's showing them off to you. Now, phantoms often present, um, sables rather, often present with phantom markings, but in actual uh, fact are sables. But normally we have this dark line which is missing with him. So I'm guessing he may indeed be a phantom. Um, Papa Tig is a phantom. Uh, he's what we call a leaked phantom and we'll talk about that a little bit more in, a, in another video because I don't want it to keep Tippy too long today. Um, so anyways, we'll, we'll watch Tan Collar to see what it is he becomes. Now I'm not going to pick up the next puppy because it's this one here, Black Collar Boy. He's nursing. He is the smallest puppy in the litter. Oh no, he's not. My, my mistake. He's the second smallest puppy in the, yes, he is the smallest puppy. Sorry, Black Collar Boy. He is 147 grams when he was born. So, you know, he's almost half the size of Bruiser over here. So because he's nursing, I don't want to pick him up and disturb him. Because he's the smallest, it's the hardest for him to get a spot at the milk bar. And when he's here, the last thing we want to do is dis disrupt that. Now, if you look at him, he's a caramel party. And if you look, you'll think, hmm, he's mostly a white dog. Uh, well, that's because these caramel spots, when they're first born, are very pale, but they'll end up darkening and be closer to this color here on like blue collar who's underneath him or even darker. So this will be an absolutely gorgeous puppy once his coat comes in darker. It'll be much more like Tippy's coloring here, although with a little bit more of a gold to it rather than the taupe hue that Tippy has. So that's our little tiny guy there, Mr. Black Collar Boy at 147 grams. And he was the first puppy born after the first break. So Light Blue came at quarter to nine, Silver came at five past nine, and Tan came at 9.27. Then we didn't have anybody until Black who arrived at two minutes after 11. This is really common. Sometimes you'll have a break for as long as three, four, five, six hours. And what most of us breeders believe is the reason for that is that because girls have two uterine horns, one on each side, and that's where the puppies are, that one side empties out and has all the puppies first and then the other side after the rest. Now, scientifically and biologically speaking, that isn't always the way it is. Um, and sometimes you have a puppy from this side and then a puppy from the other uterine horn. And sometimes you have no rests in between. It's always a little bit disconcerting as the breeder because you always worry, what's going on? Why are we having this long break? And it's easy to become uh, a little carried away in your worry and concern and think, oh, something's gone wrong uh, when indeed nothing's happening. And if you see Tippy right now where she's actually sleeping, she has her head under the pig rail there. This is what she does during the rest. This is what girls do during their rest is that they really do go sound to sleep while they wait for the rest of their puppies. So Mr. Black Collar was puppy number one in the second wave and he arrived, as I said, at 11.02. And you'll see I keep kind of giving him a boost there so that he can be a little bit, have an easier time of getting to the milk bar. And now his brother, Light Blue Collar, is pushing in underneath him. It's amazing how at 24 hours old, how strong they are and how well they can move around. And then next is Purple Collar. And Purple Collar is probably underneath his pile here. I believe this is Purple Collar. 
purple collar, I, again, I'm not going to disturb because everybody's nursing and I don't want to upset the pile and have black fall off or just do anything to upset them. Purple collar is also a caramel party, just like black collar. Very similar markings. Again, those will become darker and be, be more like the shade here of light blue collar. And purple collar was born at 1132 and he weighed 203 grams. So he is this one here, the second largest puppy in the litter. Biggest, largest, smallest, and second smallest here. And then finally at 1202, we had our last puppy where I really had all my fingers and toes crossed that it would end up being a girl. No such luck, another boy, and that's a red collar here. Now red collar, is also nursing. Red collar is black and white. He has lots of white on his face. His toes are all dipped in white and then his whole chest is white. So he's very similar to light blue except for in black and uh, no white on the top of his head. So statistically speaking, uh, because Tig is black and carries for chocolate and cream, and because Tippy is chocolate and carries for cream, we would expect 25% black, 25% chocolate, and 25% caramel puppies to be arriving, and 25% cream. So we don't have quite the statistical representation here uh, because we only have one chocolate. Uh, we've got the two blacks and then the other puppies are the caramel caramel shades. But uh, that's that's uh, pretty much how it goes with statistics. They're never exactly right bang on, normally speaking. So that's all the puppies. They're all, as you can see, doing so nicely. Uh, they're gaining weight well. We will continue to weigh them every day for the first at least two or three weeks. And on there we do a graph and we make sure that we're not missing anybody not gaining at the same rate as the other puppies. So we look for them to gain about 10% of their body weight each day. Um, and then on the graph, we can chart that. So if for instance, the light blue was, was dropping off, then we would make sure we would come in. We would assist him with finding a good spot at the milk bar and uh, even supplementing him if we needed to. These guys haven't had anything in terms of supplements yet. Tippy has. Um, Tippy's eating really well. She's very hungry, which is uh, normal. Um, and she's getting all her full fill of supplements to assist her with producing really good nutritious milk for her for her babies. These guys will start going on a probiotic tomorrow, uh, but not today. We just, I just like them all to settle in and get themselves firmly bonded with mom and all content and everything going well before we start introducing anything that's different or new to them. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, we're sure enjoying this litter. It's a really pretty litter. I love it when the litter has all sorts of different markings and different colors and it's so much fun. It's also easier to keep the puppies all straight. <laughs> when we had um, our litter with Sierra, they're all caramel ab abstracts. They all look so much the same and it's really difficult when you just glance in to go, who's who and know what's what. I really like to be able to identify them because it's easier for me if I just want to jot down a quick note and go, oh yeah, red collar was doing such and such or not doing such and such. It's just something that makes my life easier. So I hope you liked looking at all of these little Australian Labradoodle puppies. Uh, we're sure are, we sure like looking at them and we're all in here all the time spending time with Tippy and the puppies. And I hope you follow along with this litter right till going home time. We will do a weekly update uh, for each of the eight weeks we have the puppies living with us. And we'll try and uh, give you a little bit of information that's new and unique in each one of our videos. And uh, he, you can watch and follow along and see as these little cuties grow. So thanks so much for watching.